Hello, friends. I'm so glad you're here and able to join me in the virtual worship of our Lord. It's good to be together no matter how we have to do it. Our prayer is that this service will be of special comfort to you during this uncertain time. Pastor Dick and I will continue to prepare worship and our wonderful moderator Brent will upload our services to YouTube and Michelle will send out the link via email. You can access these services in the coming weeks on Sunday mornings or any time that works for you. Per a recent Facebook meme, here are a few reasons to watch church online. You don't have to drive anywhere or park. You can refill your coffee at any time. You can watch in your pajamas. And you can mute the pastor. Seriously, we hope you don't mute us. I also want to let you know that your pastors will be phoning you to check in the weeks ahead. Please let us know if there's anything you need and we will try to get you help. We can make good use of email and texting and FaceTime and phone calls. And please be assured of our prayers. And now I ask you to enjoy this ministry of music offered by our amazing music director, Larry Lober.
Our text this morning is among the most beloved of Psalms. Psalm 23 always comes up at the top of the list. Please hear these words again for the first time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today I know that there is a lot of anxiety out there. Some of you have shared your fears with me already. What better way to calm our anxiety than to look at the most beloved of all psalms today? I know from my days as a chaplain, this is the favorite one folks like to have read before they go into surgery or on, when they're on hospice beds. This is also the favorite psalm for celebration of life services. Why? It is pure comfort. David shares his confidence in God, what he really believes about God, because what he has experienced of God. God, David knows, is with him through all phases of life, in the highs and the lows, in the mountains and the valleys. God will even shepherd David's soul as he crosses, transitions through the valley of the shadow of death from this earth to life eternal. David expresses this much trust in God. Well, friends, we're in this valley of shadow right now. It's one of those low places. These are the times that we are apt to talk about God the most, that we turn to God the most. It was little wonder that church attendance soared the Sunday after 9-11, because we, we all needed ultimate comfort assurance that God was still with us. And I want you to know this today, God is closer than we think in times of crisis. God is always present, and that means everything to us. Years ago, when I was a child, I had pet rabbits. I often would forget to feed and water them, but my dad would always check to see if I had tended to them before I went to bed at night. If I hadn't tended to them, he would tell me to get up, get out of bed, and do it at night. Well, the shed in that dark Pennsylvania countryside where their barrel of pellets was stored was musty and scary and full of mice. There was no light out there, and I had to walk across this long lawn. I would cry and whine and because I was afraid of the dark, I was wishing that I had remembered to take care of those rabbits during the daylight. Once I remember that my father offered to give me a flashlight or go with me. Well, you can bet that I chose his presence in that darkness over carrying the flashlight by myself. The, the assurance that someone is there is powerful. Make no mistake about that. God's shepherding presence is more powerful than anything. Well, let's look more closely at the psalm. It begins with a metaphor. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, shepherd was a rich and complex notion in Israel's culture. The primary duties of a shepherd were well known in David's agrarian society. Shepherds had to provide and protect the flock and lead them in the right way and fend off predators. The sheep were the shepherd's responsibility. Not surprisingly, the title or the role of shepherd in the ancient Near East was also used for leaders as a designation of their 
relation to the people in their charge. Consequently, the word shepherd had, had a royal connotation. Gods and kings were called the shepherd of their people. Both were portrayed with a rod and a shepherd's crook as a sign of office. A good government, as you know, is charged with protecting the people. Both the Jewish people and Christians have long association with shepherd, um, this shepherd metaphor, as it applies to pastors and pastoral care. In this anxious time, pastors have a role in protecting the people. Our Southwest Conference of the United Church of Christ has given us good guidance for this time and has said this, the best way to love one another and to love our neighbors as ourselves is not to be physically with people outside of our own living quarters until the spread of COVID-19 is controlled. I did some research into what went on in churches during the 1918 Spanish flu and found that nearly all churches were in agreement that they needed to close in compliance with government mandates for a time to keep the people safe. Of course, there were some notable exceptions and a few to get on board late, just like we have today. Some things never change. Now, I know you might be worried about your finances, your children's job, your job, your health, the shortages in the stores, and so on, and I get that. One way I've found in my life that's helpful to alleviate anxiety is to think back over your life and recall some of the most difficult times you went through, maybe times when you simply could not perceive God's presence with you, dark nights of the soul. But then, after you made it through that dark valley, you look back on that time and you begin to see how God brought you through or even brought about something new because of it. Hindsight, they say, is 2020. Well, looking back, we have the benefit of perspective. Think of those precious words in that beloved hymn, Amazing Grace. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. Twas grace that brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. There's no reason to think that God's shepherding presence will ever leave us. Not back then, not now, and not even when our souls make the biggest transition of all from this life to life everlasting. That's the amazing comfort of Psalm 23. One of the interesting questions about Psalm 23 is when it was written by David. One pastor, Johnny Hunt, said this about it. Some think he wrote it as an old man approaching the end of life's journey, looking back over his life and rejoicing in the goodness of God. So in that scenario, it was hindsight, the benefit of reflection and perspective when he was looking back. And Saul had how God had worked everything out for his good and for his people's good. Others, other scholars think that David wrote it as a youth out there in the Jerusalem hills, his father's flock around him, his harp in his hand, and his soul aflame with the great thought which had just come to him. I tend to think um, that he wrote it toward the end of his life because he had the benefit of perspective and looking back and seeing with greater clarity how God was with him when he defeated Goliath and how God was with him when he was kept safe from enemies and when God was with him as he guided him as king and so on. Now reading this psalm as a Christian brings Jesus to mind. The earliest Christians said, the Lord is my shepherd and applied the title Lord to Jesus. Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd in John 10, verse 11, in one of those I am sayings. I am the Good Shepherd. Bible commentator Jew, uh, James Luther Mays says that those early Christians claimed Jesus as shepherd and guardian of their souls. In the Christian rereading of this psalm, Jesus is the shepherd in David's place. 
David, in his youth, you'll remember, was a field shepherd in the Jerusalem hills and in charge of a flock of sheep. Well, Jesus is the one who restores our souls and leads us on paths of righteousness and accompanies us through danger and spreads the Holy Supper before us in the presence of sin and death and pursues us in gracious love all the days of our lives. Because of Jesus, the words, I shall not want or I shall not lack anything, these words are completely fulfilled. We have a shepherd who guides us through life's darkest valleys to living water. I hope all of us can come to see Psalm 23 as an expression of confidence in God's protection during this time and in any of life's difficult periods that might befall us. God brings us through these storms, and in the words of St. Julian of Norwich, all will one day be well. Well, let me end on a lighter note with this story about one of the Peanuts comic strips. It was used in a sermon once by Grady R. Britton. In one of those Peanuts comic strips, Snoopy is shown on his doghouse typing a novel. He begins the story with these words. It was a dark and stormy night. Snoopy always begins his stories that way. It was a dark and stormy night. Well, Lucy happened to come by and put in her two cents worth of advice. In her aggressive, blunt tone of voice, she scolds him, you stupid dog, that's the dumbest thing I've ever read. Who ever heard of such a silly way to begin a story? Don't you know that all the good stories begin with once upon a time? Lucy berates and belittles him more, and then she leaves. The last frame of the comic strip shows Snoopy starting over his story. And this time he types, once upon a time, it was a dark and stormy night. Friends, this is a once upon a time thing, this dark and stormy night with all of these disruptions to our daily life. It's not a dark and stormy night forever. God brings us through these times and God is ever present with us. I know that this time of social distancing seems like a dark eternity, but if history has anything to teach us about other pandemics, these times inevitably pass. Stock markets that fall rise again. Many who are sick recover. Curves flatten. Let us remember that we can't always calm the storm, but what we can do is calm ourselves, remembering that the Good Shepherd guards our souls through all the circumstances in life, to include that moment we pass on to glory. This dark and stormy night will pass. Amen. Let us join our hearts together for a moment of prayer. Uh, the prayer that I am sharing with you was given to us through the United Church of Christ uh, by a woman by the name of Kathy Dwyer, who was ordained in the church that I served in Ohio. And I hope that you will be able to hear uh, the depth of how she is leading us in this time of prayer. Let us join together in prayer. O oh God, as we walk through the dark time, we confess that we are fearful and anxious. We fear we will run out of food and basic necessities. We fear. We fear that our anxiety will get the best of us. We fear we and others we love will get sick. Forgive us when we become so self-consumed that we only focus on the dire situation and fail to see the goodness around us. Today we pray that you will lead us to a still place where we can feel and know your presence. We pray that your promise is true, that you constantly pursue us with goodness and love and that we are never, ever alone. Let us in this moment of silence 
hold those whom you are holding by the power of your love. And now let us join together in praying the prayer that was taught to us by Jesus. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we receive our benediction, let us be blessed again by the music of Larry Lober.
Hear this lovely benediction written by Nathan Nettleton that is based on Psalm 23 and John 10 and on 1 John chapter 3. Go now with your trust in the Good Shepherd and let us love, not just in words, but in truth and action. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has commanded. And may God be at your side, even in valleys of death, May Christ Jesus be the cornerstone in your life, and may the Holy Spirit abide in you and tend you with love and mercy all the days of your life. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.